Well, hello, all ye. Oops. <laughs> well, today's little video, I'm going to be changing the oil on this 92 Acura Vigor. I have never done it before. I attempted it at first, but when I first bought the car, the oil drain plug was on so tight I couldn't get it off, and so was the oil filter. And the oil filter is in a really strange spot, which you'll see in a minute. I since then I had another shop do it, and I think everything's going to be loosened up now to where I'll be able to do it myself. This car has gone about 5,000 miles on the oil. They recommend every 7,500 miles that it get done. My maintenance required light is yellow. Uh, it was green just earlier today. I already had the stuff to change the oil though, so it's no big deal. And right now we have 268.513, and that's nothing, because Honda builds this bad boy. Uh, a couple other things, they recommend you change the oil when it's warm, not cold. That way it flows out better and you get more of the oil out of it. Pull her up on some ramps, gather your tools, and drain the oil. Nothing to that effect. Since I told you the oil filter is really hard to get to, I'll show you. You see all of this good stuff. And you look right down under here. And where my finger's touching, this white thing right there is the oil filter. Which is really stupid because it's in a prime location up high to get everything oily when you take it off. Awesome. Under here, there's about 400 different drain plugs and things to look at. It's got a differential and all that stuff that a lot of cars, uh, regular cars, don't have. So it's always fun to get underneath the uh, an Acura and try to figure out what you're doing. And most Hondas on the little air box thing where your filter goes tell you the type of oil that it recommends, which is 530. How much, which is uh, 4.2 quarts and oil change interval is at every 7,500 miles. Um, if it was newer, I would go 7,500 miles, but since it is older with a lot higher mileage, it's very cheap maintenance to just take care of it early. Well, we got the oil draining out. We'll go ahead and take off this oil filler cap on the top, just to help with the flow of air and whatnot, and it's able to drain a little quicker, get all and there's the bolt, which is weird because right on the other side of it, right there, is another bolt that looks just like that bolt. So it's kind of like, oh, which one is it? A little freaky. But I figured it out and they over tightened it like usual when you take it to a shop. But now it'll be put back uh, the way I want it to be put back. I went ahead and finished letting the oil drain out of the bottom of the car and reached down here with the oil filter and it was on really nice and loose. Uh, not loose, but as a, able to actually take it off with your hand and not need some sort of special tool. Which is awesome because so many people think that this thing's just going to come flying off somewhere. It's just ridiculous. It was last changed at Oil Can Henry's, which is a pretty popular place around here because it's one of the only places that use uh, castor oil as their regular oil. I'll go ahead and clean off the base where the previous filter was attached. It is mobile. 530 like the car requires. I usually use Castrol but this was on sale and it's definitely not as bad as let's say Penn's oil. Penn's oil sucks. Anybody that argues that just doesn't know what they're talking about. So Castrol or mobile all you're allowed to use if you're going to watch my channel. Just kidding. So now that we have the filter sitting here, and we're going to open up the oil can, oil bottle, jug, whatever. Get a little bit of oil on our fingertip. Lube up the base, the gasket thing, so it creates a better seal when we put it back on. So we got the oil pan drain bolt tightened back up. We got the new oil filter tightened back up. Uh, dispose of all your oil and oil filter properly, of course. Now it's time to add the oil in. Recommend you get a funnel. Plus a funnel is about a whole 50 cents at Walmart or something. 
Okay, the car calls for 4.2 quarts. I'll start it up and back it off and you'll get to see how bad my motor mounts are because you'll see the engine torque. Fun stuff. Really moved much. What a disappointment. So we'll just check the oil level, see where she's at, and this job's pretty much done, so I'm just going to go ahead and shut the camera off. But that's how you change the oil, and here soon I'm also going to change the transmission fluid on it too, and maybe I'll make another video then. Asking for, oh look, get it with his hood on, for updates on the Vigor. Uh, it does have a blown head gasket, but it doesn't affect the coolant going into the oil, which is really interesting and really cool about this engine design. So you can keep driving it. Uh, the only thing it's going to do is if you get, if you're a little lead footed with it, uh, since some of the engine compression isn't being held back by the head gasket, it's actually going into the cooling system a little bit and pressurizing it. Uh, so if you're really hot and heavy on it, it'll cause the coolant to overflow into the little overflow uh, container. And if too much of it goes over there, of course it's going to spill out and cause your engine to overheat a little because it's not going to have all of the coolant in the radiator like it's supposed to. So you just take it from the overflow, pour it back into the radiator when it's cool, and it fixes the problem all over again until the next time you feel the need to hot rod it or whatever it is that you need to, to do that would cause it to, to overflow a little bit because of the engine compression is just too much for it. Uh, if you're going to drive around like this, so I recommend all your coolant hoses be pretty new, otherwise they're going to blow, uh, as this has had one hose blow on it already. But the hoses are in kind of were in kind of bad shape. Now uh, this one's new, the lower rad hose is new, and then there's this one coming out of the back of the thermostat housing, which is bulging, and it goes down in there, and that one needs to be replaced because uh, that's probably the next one that's going to blow. And all of that kind of stuff is a lot cheaper than paying $1,000 to have the head gasket replaced on this. And it's just not worth it. So that's about it. Almost forgot about the maintenance required thing. Some cars are a little bit different. So we're going to do what I think is going to reset it. Take our key. Push in on that. And sure enough it went back to green. So just take it, push it in there and kind of like it fell from the top. It just went from yellow back to green. I also think it goes to red too, but I'm not positive. I think red is when you absolutely do need to change your oil. All right, that's it for today now, for real.